Hi, I'm Nerox. Welcome to The Chop. This is the third beat breakdown. This time we will once again analyze Jay Dilla. The beat is Get a Hold. Which uses a beautiful sample from the song The Visit by The Circle. Let's start the breakdown. Just a quick reminder, watch it until the end for the main takeaways from the breakdown and my own flip of this juicy sample. The tempo of the beat is 95 and the key is F minor. Jay Dilla did three chops, two main loops and one to fill in the gap between the loops. And the fill in chop, which is right before loop one, where he says just. The original song is in C major, so I pitched the chops down four semitones to get them to F minor, which again is the key of the beat. Then stretched it to make it fit the tempo. Arrangement. First, the intro. Jay Dilla does a triplet intro. He repeats the first step of loop one three times, then goes into the loops. Interesting note, only on the first time he does the loop, he goes full loop one, then loop two. After that, throughout the remaining of the beat, it is loop one for two and a half steps, then the third fill-in chop for 1.5 steps, then full loop two to finish it off this two bar loop, which plays for the remaining of the beat. The only difference is that he uses a low pass filter on some sections for a switch up. And to finish it off, he does a fade out outro. Let's talk about mixing. I sent all the samples to the same mixer using a reverb and a low pass filter. That way it will affect both samples when I split them. I routed the samples mixer exclusively to these two mixers. In one, I removed the lows by stacking EQs, removing around 300 Hertz. And the other, I did the opposite, removing the highs by stacking EQs and filtering anything above 300 Hertz. Also, use the soft clipper to fatten the bass and on this compressor, I didn't compress, but I did use the gain knob so I could have the bass hitting as loud as I want them. After that, I sent those two mixers exclusively to this mixer so I could use Maximus to balance the low, mids and highs to my liking. Now let's finish it off with some drums. I love the bounce of the original and I did some cool stuff to emulate it. It is just a two bar loop for the drums. Makes sense since the melody also loops every two bars. I have my hats hitting every two steps, but to achieve a more bouncy and natural feel, I have the velocity changing and shifted the whole pattern on the grid so it is not hitting perfectly on the grid. For the snare, I played this basic pattern. I layered two snares, with one playing a lower note to give it more body, and I did the same thing I did with the hats, dragging the whole pattern so it doesn't hit perfectly on the grid. The kick is what I found the most interesting. He plays this pattern. The kick is hitting perfectly on the grid, I thought it worked that way. But what is interesting, that while listening to the original beat, I notice a quieter kick playing right before the snare hit.
so I added that kick and played it at a lower velocity. And to my surprise, it worked fantastically. Sounds similar to the original and it is something I don't think I've ever done before. And I will do it more often because it sounds super bouncy. And I definitely feel I can make some cool lo-fi 90s stuff with this kick snare pattern. But finally my main takeaways. Then I'll play a bit of the remake, then my own flip. My main takeaway other than the bounce of the kick is not to be scared of using small loops. He does some variation with the low pass and that is enough to keep it fresh throughout the beat. To modernize the sound, I would add more stuff on top of the small loop. But again, don't be afraid to keep it simple and no problem if the loop you want to use is not a 4 bar or 8 bar loop. Bye for now, subscribe for more producing content and my original content as well.